Right, today we're going to be looking at collecting some baits and how to store baits so it's in prime condition when you come to use it. Okay, catching sand eels. Well, you can catch them off the boat. You can do, also do this from the shore, um, casting out in certain places, but you basically use little sabiki lures or you can use little shrimp rig kind of lures, just very small lures, basically. And the launch or the sand eel will grab hold of them. Okay. It was well. It was three sand eels. Now it's two. Now, obviously, you could catch them off the boat, but if you want to go off the shore and get them, uh, you can take a fork down, and you need to find sand which is more of a sort of shingle is best. You can find them in ordinary sand, but they're usually in the softer sand. And you want to go at night. Night time is the best because sandy will go to ground at night or go into the sand at night, so there'll be a lot more. And you can use a rake, like you would rake cockles, just rake the sand. You've got to be quick to grab them. Another method, just your hands. Um, if you're in an area where there's a lot of weaver fish, I wouldn't advise the hand method so much. You don't want to get stung by one of those. And another method which gets used boat and shore is a seine net. This is just a small one. Um, it basically, you put it out on the sand, stretch it out, go around the circle, pull it in, and hopefully you'll have uh, sand eels in it. And you, like I say, this is quite often they use this method on the boat. But you can go at low tide with a small one like this and do exactly the same. And hopefully you'll get a nice bag of sand eel and pop them in your bucket and you can be on your way. Right, so sand eels, when you're keeping your sand eels, you have several ways to keep them. Obviously, if you're shore fishing or transporting, you're going to need a bucket. So you're going to need one of those as well, which is an aerator, which keeps your sand eel alive on your travels. Now if you use a bucket like this, don't put too many sand eels in. Um, if you keep less sand eels in, they'll be a lot more lively when you come to use them. You put too many in, they can get very sluggish. Also, you need to keep your water cool if you can. Cooler water keeps more oxygen, keeps the sand eel again more lively. Um, if you're going to get more sand eels, I mean I'd put a dozen in here. If you're going to get more than that, get yourself a bucket like that. Give it a bit more water and then shove them in that one. These buckets actually like this, you can buy, um, I know over here you can buy them from the fishing shop and they actually have a lid that snaps on which is good. You can always pop a hole through the top for your um, air stone to go through. So that's, like I say, transporting or if you're going off the shore, fine. If you have a boat, then you might have one of these or you can get one of these, it's called a couge. And you basically put your sand eels in there and hang this over the side. It's also good to use with that in the boat you can have some in the bucket some in the couch hanging over the side in the ocean best place for them or if you have a mooring or a dock you can keep this hung underneath that with live sand in and you've got a nice supply for the week or however long you want to keep them for just make sure to um, sink your couch lower you want the couch to get it down to the colder water you don't want it on the surface where the the waters can get warm in the sun sun should I say and DIY version which is this and this is an old washing machine inside or the drum of it and basically what you do is you put a plywood lid on it and some bungee straps across and this will hold a lot of sand eel like I say around your boat you can get a different size drum this is quite a big one it's got a big opening easy access but obviously you need more wood you can get them with smaller openings uh, be slightly different. You only got to just check around the sides when you make these that you don't have any holes like this. This is actually sealed with a plastic thing, but that there isn't any holes that they can come out. And uh, there you have an instant couge if you can get hold of an old washing machine. And these are very good. Like I say, they they can actually be a bit better than these smaller couches like that because they'll have more space so that you can get more eels in and they're not sort of getting bashed around that kind of thing when there's movement. Another good one is using a cool box. If you've got an old cool box, it's all the better. Simply because you can keep your sand eels cool. You can get a nice bit of water in there. You've got a lid that can seal down in your car so the water doesn't slosh everywhere. And if you just put a hole in, you can put a um, air stone in, just to attach an air box. You can strap it on top or just put it on the side or do whatever you like, but um, a good way to transport them and keep your vehicle from getting water everywhere. And like I say, keep them nice and cool. Now razor fish, you can dig them, 
along with clams and cockles. You can also rate cockles. Or with the razors, you could use salt to pour down the hole, but you're still going to have to rake or dig the cockles and clams. You'll see that the sand is starting to lift. There it comes. Oh, big gums. They literally will come out, literally throw themselves onto the sand. If we give it a minute. Any minute now. And you see he's come completely out the sand. So, razor fish, cockles and clams, you just literally put them in a bag, chuck them in the freezer, and then when you need them, you can just take them out singly, take what you want, or you can do like I did with the uh, vacuum packer and pack them that way as well. Peeler crab, or shore crab, soft shell, whatever you want to call them. Now, you'll find those mainly, the shore crab, you'll find it sort of halfway up from low to high tide basically. In that region you'll find them. You will find them pretty high up. Um, they tend to come up high to get away from everything basically that want to eat them when they change their shell. And if you find one or two around, look in that same sort of area because you will find more. This is the ones that you, when you find them like they're under the stones. Female ones you'll find quite often will be, a big male will be carrying a female and she'll either have shed and be a soft shell or she'll be still hard but he's getting ready because she can only, I believe she can only mate once she has changed her shell so when you find those you won't necessarily find lots more but when you find the single ones just the males under the sh under the rock shedding you will find more in an area because they, they tend to sort of keep a bit separate although you'll always find peelers with non peelers etc etc um, often when you find one you'll find a lot of peelers here and not so many hard crab other places you'll find hundreds of crabs under rocks and I kind of avoid those areas because you tend not to see that many peelers in there and to distinguish what a peeler is there's a crab and there's one there that's a peeler I can tell just by the colour now what you do is you take the leg just take that end section off and then if you can see that there's a nice new little leg under there that's perfect, so that's another peeler crab there. Well I tend to use the peeler crab on the same day and you, you can put it in a bucket of seaweed and keep it for a few days, as long as it's kept cold and damp the crab will be fine for a few days. Um, if you're using the soft ones that have already changed their shell you need to use those fairly soon because the shells are hardening all the time. Now I prefer the ones that haven't shed, I believe they have a stronger smell because they obviously haven't shed the shell and it hasn't washed away that smell. Now that smell, sometimes you can smell it, it's kind of like a musty smell when you put the crab on, you can get a, a, a sense of it. Now I know that the females give off the scent because when they change the sh when they're about to change the shells the males pick up on it and they'll get hold of the female, hold the female because that's the only time they can mate obviously or she can mate, is when she changes the shell. The thing is bass can pick up that sense and that's why they come right in sniffing around the rocks and they can smell it from a very long way away when a crab sheds its shell. It's just a case of getting the crab out from under the rocks in. Obviously you're saving the uh, effort of the bass doing that by having it on a hook sort of in the open. And that's why it's such a good bait. I believe other fish can smell it like rays and things but I don't really fish for those so not 100% on that. Anyway, uh, you can also freeze it but the trouble with freezing is, it, is that when you use it you'll find that the, the smell will wash out very very quickly. But as soon as you put it in the water it's sort of almost gone. You know, I mean, you still will catch with it, but it nowhere near compares to a fresh peeler. Right, mackerel. Well, most of us probably know how to catch mackerel. Yeah, look at this lot. So those mackerel were caught on a boat, obviously, but you can actually catch them off the shore exactly the same way. You just don't drop it down, cast it out. Reel in slowly, you'll catch mackerel. Or, 
You can use things like little spinners, soft plastics, anything small, shiny, bright, exciting. The mackerel will chase after it. And if you put this on very light gear, it can be great fun catching mackerel from the shore. Now, storing it. Storing it, I still see it all the time, mackerel, frozen mackerel. You take it out the freezer and it turns to mush. You try and put a hook, it's useless. You see people wrapping cotton around it and all sorts. Well, there's one simple little trick to keeping your mackerel almost as firm as it was when you caught it. Take the stomach out. What happens is, if you leave the stomach of a mackerel in after death, the stomach acids start to break down the flesh. Now, if you, even if you bring it back fairly quick, you put it in the freezer, it still takes time to freeze, and during that time, those acids are breaking down the flesh. So, remove the stomach as soon as you can, give it a quick rinse, keep your mackerel cool while you're obviously bring them back and stick them in the freezer and they'll come out almost as firm as a fresh mackerel and you will be able to literally put it on a hook and you better use a beach caster and belt it as hard as you can and that mackerel will not come off um, you won't need any cotton anything like that I mean it, it stays really firm that's how I freeze all my mackerel now I mean sometimes I just will fillet them just freeze the fillets as well but if you're going to keep whole mackerel Make sure you take the guts out, then you'll have a perfect bait to use in the future. Now, if you intend to keep mackerel alive for using for fishing, um, we'll cover horse mackerel as well, because I'll leave a link at the end of the video and you show you how to fish with horse mackerel. Um, yeah, if you're going to store them like, on a boat, because that's where you'll have them mostly, you can do it off the shore if you catch them as well, but what you need, you're going to need an aerator, you're going to need quite a bit of water, because mackerel will die. Mackerel they, they move around so quick, they use a lot of oxygen, so they need that aerated water. If you keep one in a, in a quite a large container, you can keep two or three alive in it. If you keep changing the water as well, but you have to do it very regularly to keep those mackerel alive. Um, when it comes to horse mackerel, horse mackerel will stay alive a lot easier. They don't need as much of the oxygen that like a mackerel does, and they can sit in a container of water without an aerator for quite a long time. Mackerel, they will die. Horse mackerel stay alive. A lot longer and if you've never tried horse mackerel um, well just watch the link at the end of the video and it will show you what you can catch right ragworm king ragworm you'll find in estuaries you'll find it in harbors the sort of more siltier kind of muddy kind of sand you'll get that in and the rock ragworm you always grab them by the head you grab them by the tail they will break. And heads a bit that bites as well, just so you know. <laughs> that is one there. There he is. There he is. Now ragworm, when I collect it, whenever I can, I will just put it into green weed. Get some um, ragworm, keeping ragworm in, or keeping alive this green stuff. Now I've seen, now I've seen ragworm put in perlite, put in peat, put in newspaper, put in sand, put in all sorts of different things. And they all have, obviously, some kind of benefits, but keeping them in green weed will keep them alive for a long time. If you're not planning on going for a day or two, you can keep your... Uh, worm alive for a lot longer as long as you keep it cool right put it in the fridge or something don't freeze it but keep it nice and cool and then if you go fishing with it and you don't use all of it you can always bring it back and reuse it again just freshen it up in the sea water on top of that look after it and when I say look after it take out any broken tails any damaged parts because that's what will cause your other worm to die right lugworm well lugworm Oh, where I am, I tend to just dig it up fresh. Um, I can get it most beaches when I need to, to get some or if I'm going to use some. But to be honest, I don't really use it that much. If we had much bigger beaches with just sand, the fish would probably feed more on the lug. For me, it's not a great bait. Around here, we've got such a mixture of ground, the fish have a lot more choice on what they feed on. Um, if you're obviously on beaches that are just swathes and swathes of sand, you get a lot of place, cod, sole, that kind of thing. Um, then lugworm is probably what you're going to be after. Now I will leave a link in the bottom of this video to Fisho's site where he shows you how to salt the lug 
uh, oil the lug, you know, how to store it, this kind of thing. Um, purely because, like I say, I will go and dig it fresh, and even though I know the theory behind it, and I have once or twice maybe stored some, it's not something I do regular, so I don't really want to dish out any advice on that, um, not being too familiar, obviously, not doing it all the time. So, like I say, a link for that will be in the description for Lugworm. So, we were talking about Cougars before. Check that one out. See what that, that one's for, right? When you go fishing, you strap it on your belt, and you can carry a couple of sand eels when you're wading in the sea. Huh? Nah. Nah. Not really. Now, this is just a miniature that uh, an old Guernsey boy used to make these up. And he used to make miniatures of them. This is like the traditional handmade couge for keeping the sand eels or bait alive in. And pretty good. This is how they used to make them out of wicker. And obviously the one I showed you was made of steel and like a plastic. But this is the traditional one. We used to have one, but obviously they, they do go rotten eventually. But uh, pretty cool with a little wooden top. He also used to make little baskets like this. These are traditional little, I suppose you can call them coastal foraging gatherers kind of baskets. Um, you basically, if it was big enough, you'd, we used to have one of these as well. Again, it rotted away. But you basically put it over your shoulder and you'd carry all your razors, your abalones and whatever else you picked up on the beach and carry them home in this. And this again, this is another little traditional kind of basket for carrying your your catch. So there you go. That was just a uh, short video on collecting and storing baits. And hopefully you'll have found a few useful tips in there. And the fishing will be resuming soon.